Hey guys, and welcome back to the show. So in the last video, we made sure we could get the connections right to spawn our player in the room in the exact X and Y coordinate that the database said. So in this video, we actually want to be able to store the current X and Y values whenever the player leaves the room. So if I click continue, I click player two, we go over here, we kind of adventure a little bit, do some cool things. I push escape, I want that escape press to then grab the X and Y, send it back to our API, our Node.js API, and store that information in the database. Now, before we begin, please make sure you are subscribed to this channel and have hit the bell notification to make sure you're notified when I upload a new video. Now, I think it's best for us to actually start off in the back end. So we're gonna start in our Node.js API and we're going to add a put endpoint, register that endpoint, and then head on into Postman to create the request, which will allow us to interact with that kind of programmatically. Then once that's all done, and we can confirm and convince ourselves that we can make changes through the put uh, request to the player row in our database, then we're gonna go and hook that up through to GameX Studio 2. So I'm gonna exit this for the time being. Let's go to our server. First thing I wanna do is register the endpoint here. So we're gonna say router.put players.id, it's very similar to the delete. Over here, you have to say which object you want to edit. In this case, it's a player object. So I'm using this endpoint or this controller and I'm gonna pass through the ID over there cause that's the restful standard. And we're gonna map this to controller.putplayer which is a function we're gonna be exporting momentarily. Okay, very good. Then let's go to players controller. I'm going to actually copy the delete cause that's gonna save us a lot of time. All right, put player, and the SQL here is gonna be an update statement. Update, we say, what do we wanna update? We wanna update the player table. And what do we wanna update? Well, we use the set keyword to set some column of that table. Now, even though we only change in the X and Y, maybe later we want to change the player name. We obviously wanna change rooms at some point. So let's make sure that this put is complete. We can change every part of the player object, obviously except for the ID. We'll use the ID, the identifier, to make that change. Find the correct row in that table. So here I'm going to go and steal all of these guys. Name, sprite, room ID, X and Y. Let's copy that, let's put it over here and Here's a cool thing. So there's two ways to put values that are coming through from your body into your SQL over here. One way is we can just interpolate the strings. So I think we use our back ticks um, and then you can use like dollar curlies and you can put a value in there. So for example, you could put, let's do dollar curlies. Actually, let me put it in the real place. You could say like set name equal to dollar curlies. And then we need to find request body name. So you can do that, plonk it in there. Pretty simple. You can do that way, which kind of reads really nice. I do like that. Alternatively, you can just slap a whole bunch of question marks down here, which is very similar to what we've done before. Maybe at some point I'll think about how I really want to create the standard for that. But question marks we've been using for now, um, let's just roll with it. And I want to copy this params bit because remember these params are going to be put into there automatically paste it over this and oopsie, oopsie. Let's see what we got here. Request name, this needs to be in the same order as these question marks, by the way. One downside of this method. We've got name, we've got sprite, we've got room ID, we've got X and Y. That's fantastic, it's identical. No witchcraft there. Okay, then we've got DB run, SQL params. We've got this uh, function notation so that we can handle errors more elegantly. And here we're just gonna say updated player with ID such and such. And we mustn't forget to export this module or this function basically, because that'll make it available over here to this guy, um, because we get in the controller over here. So that all is looking pretty good. All right, so let's go to Postman. Oh, actually I can fire this up again. Restart that. Let's go to Postman, bring this guy in. Uh, it's very similar to the post. So can I duplicate this tab? I can. Let's change our request type to put. Remember it's players slash the ID of the player. Um, what players do I have in here? Let's go do a get. Let's see, okay, so we've got ID one, name player one. That's a good uh, test. All right, so let's change this to a put. 
we'll call that put. And we need to put ID in here. Let's make that one. And let's put the keyword edit in over here. And we'll change that to adventurer one. Room, let's change that to a two. And let's make this like 500 and 550. Okay, and this needs to be players slash one. So this root prefix, all this over here needs to match what we have here in our index. So players slash the ID. And that ID, remember, gets grabbed over here, request params ID. So we should be able to just go and fire off this request, go back to our get and see that player one is now called player one edit. Remember this ID, it's important, actually is something that we, needs to be something that exists in our database. If we pass through a, well, a different ID, I suppose, seven, eight, nine, it's not gonna do anything. Our update statement will still run technically, but remember this where clause is saying it's specifically looking to update a player object that matches this ID. So if we put a seven or a 12 or a 100,000, it's still gonna run this update statement, but because there's no row in the database that matches it, it's just gonna say, okay, well, I tried, I updated zero rows, you know, carry on. So if you wanted to, you could, you know, inside here, check if, if an update actually occurred, you could send back a response that was more appropriate. Also another thing that one could do for security reasons, but because this is just a local kind of uh, database on, on the player's machine, it's not within a server somewhere for a multiplayer experience, always check that the ID coming through over here matches the ID in your in your body. So you can check that request params ID equals request or body dot ID, just to make sure no one's like spoofing IDs, trying to change identifiers of a different player that they don't have access to. Okay, so let's click send. Let's see what response we get. We get a 200, okay, I like that, that means successful HTTP response. And let's do a get, and let's see what happened to player one. There we go, player one edit. Sprite has changed to one, 500, 550, and that's two. So that was a very, very successful put request. Now, if I go back to Game Maker and I fire this up again, we go back to the character select screen, we, we select player one. We should now see him spawn. Ah, see, edit, oh, look at this, it's actually getting too long for this little box, but we can fix that later. You can see that's been changed, that's edit. If I click continue, I should be in 500, 550. Wow, there I am. I used to be like somewhere up here, I think it was 50, 50 or something like that. That's working. Now, obviously, if we if we run around our room, and we push escape and we go back in, we're not gonna be in that place where we left because we haven't actually bridged the gap, tied the two pieces together. We now need to make use of that new put endpoint. All right, and this is actually quite simple. Remember we had this key press escape that would take us to the main menu. Let's now take our player object from, from Game Maker, convert it to a DS map, convert that DS map into a JSON object, and then use HTTP uh, request, the function in Game Maker, to send that JSON object back to our Node.js API. Var player, we're gonna create a map here. We're gonna say DS map uh, add, we specify the player, we'll make this a little bigger. It would be nice if um, if this was a little crisper when we'd zoom in, because you can zoom in really nicely, but it gets blurry as one does. So you gotta find that like sweet spot. But anyway, for now it's, it's okay. Let's go to about this. So the player, the DS map is called player. We give it a, an object, it's like a key value store over here. So we're gonna say name, and we're gonna give it a property or a value global dot underscore name. Okay, now I'm gonna copy this a couple of times. We always want to add to this player map. And here we can add sprite, room ID, X and Y. Now these names are very important. They need to match what our server is expecting over here. Name, sprite, room ID, X, Y. Uh, this one's a little different because we need to convert like IDs to names and vice versa. Maybe in the future we'll just change it to an ID. We still need to decide at some point whether we're going to be saving uh, the strings of the resources, for example, the sprite or the room or the identifier that Game Maker makes. I still need to think about that. We just need to, I need to double check if that identifier changes depending on the order in which it is. I know sprite index, for example, if we had to rename this one to zero, 
that'll have a zero index now and that could mess up things because obviously you want your game to evolve and change and update but you don't want the data to then break so we'll, we'll just keep that in mind for, for now let's just keep saving this as the string of the name sprite get name global dot underscore sprite index then here we want global dot underscore room underscore id then here we can just use the x and the y of the player next up we need to convert this to a json object so we can say json encode oops code and we pass in the player map then remember we don't want these ds maps to be living beyond their needs and destroy it okay great now that we've got that that json object we can create the request so we can say header map equals another ds map ds map add header map content type and that's going to be application json there are all kinds of other properties that you can put into your header but we only need to set the content type and then we are going to say uh, put equals http request we give it the location so this http localhost 8080 for stack players for slash and then we need to put the the identifier of our player so that's global uh, dot underscore id we tell it the verb that's put we give it the headers which is header map and we send through the body which is our json okay so we request url so that's players slash id put is the verb map json that's looking good and then we go to the room over here next up we need to add event asynchronous http and here we say if ds map oops, find value async load id equals put so that's the reference to that http put request we made in the escape press if ds map find value async load oops like that and then here's the status and if that status equals zero so everything was good oh actually this escape this isn't supposed to be in here what if i can destroy this header also let's try that because we're done with it now i'm gonna come with that out but maybe i can i'm pretty sure i can this is actually where we want to go to the room once the event was successful r s t r so that's result string ds uh, map find value well i'll use that a lot async load and we get the result now, I know I'm not really using this in any way, but we can if we want to show error messages and stuff like that. We might do a video on double checking all our error handling. Just to be 100% sure we're not going to places we shouldn't go, depending on what our backend is saying. Um, and then here we want to say like RSTR failed. Okay, cool. I think that is it. We'll come back to this guy. We should be all good. If this is the put request, then we check if the status is zero, which is good. If it isn't, it's failed. If it is good, we'll get the result, which in this case, a put wouldn't be anything like if you did a post, that's where we consumed the, would consume the identifier coming back. So we could allow the player to go straight into the game world without having to go back to the selector. And then we'll go to the main menu, um, having that being saved. Okay, so let's fire this up. Let's go to our server because we see we've got this updated message. So if this works, we're gonna play it too. We should see updated player with ID two. All right, okay, let's go down here, push escape. 
Okay, okay, so I was wrong. Hmm, let's go back. No error. Let's see, did that actually update? Did that update? Let's do, let's go to our get, uh, run that. Hmm, I'm not convinced. I'm not convinced. Let's try again. No, that definitely didn't save. Ah, HTTP error should be sent request. Connection with server cannot be established. Okay, okay, there we go. So there's our problem. This is running. Let's see, localhost 8080. Oh, that's not supposed to be secure HTTP. Yes, secure. Okay, let's try that again. Let's go player two. Let's go all the way down here. Escape. Okay. So we didn't go back to the main menu. Let's check Postman. Player two. Oh, that looks like that did actually update 82680. That did look like it updated, which means is it not actually going back here? There we go, so it did do the update. Lovely, okay, that did save. Okay, so our escape event is just not working too well, which means actually it's not getting back here, is it? Uh, show debug message, let's just say here. Save that, let's fire this up again. We'll watch our console at the bottom, our output. Continue, let's do two again. Escape. Ah, look, see, it's not even getting, it's not getting here. Let's try it up here. Continue, uh, I'm gonna put the server in the background. Okay, I mean, at least we're saving our position. Let's go bottom right, escape, nothing. Here, okay, look at that, we got it here, which means we're getting here. Our status, what is our status? Let's grab that. Let's put it in here. Our if statement is probably just rubbish. Okay, so watch the output. Let's move a bit to the left, push escape. Ah, it's a minus one. It is a minus one. I wonder why. So minus one, even though this is successful, and just to double check, if I go edit player one, let's go up, escape, still minus one, but that was successful. Res end, is it maybe this? Turn a zero here. Okay. It's rerunning. Let's go back here. I'm very curious. Nope, still minus one. Okay, so it's nothing to do with, with the response over there. Okay, I can't seem to figure out why we're getting a minus one. It's very strange because it is definitely succeeding. So for the time being, let's just move this room go to event over here in the escape press. I know this is not exactly correct, but this should work. Right, we click continue. Let's try player one. Uh, let's bring him to the bottom right. Push escape. Okay, cool. Let's see if our server saved it. There we go. Updated player with ID one. Back into continue. Back to player one edit. And we see we are at the bottom right. Okay, cool. So that about wraps up this video. We are able to save our coordinates. We could save anything else about our player, our name, if we change the room in this fashion. My homework will be to go and find out why we are getting a minus one. And in my next video, we will take a look at resolving that issue. So if you found this tutorial educational and helpful, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe. If you like what I'm doing here, go check out my Patreon. Links are in the description. You can also find the project files on that Patreon post. So until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you then.